I'm here on this wheat farm, located in the Njoro area of Kenya, about 108 kilometers northwest of the Kenyan capital Nairobi. This farm is run by the Food Crops Research Center, which is under the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization. I'm here to meet the center director, Dr. Godwin Masharia, who's also the lead wheat breeder here at the center. I'm here to talk to him about wheat and gene editing when it comes to wheat. Uh, gene editing uh, generally is a, you know, a set or a range of molecular techniques that are used to introduce uh, targeted cuts uh, into the DNA. Or in other words, they are used to introduce mutations in the DNA that are desirable uh, for selection. So I'll start from, if you're able to see here, these are an old wheat variety that is already you know, drying up. But what I want to show here right from now is that this particular wheat is one that is susceptible to disease we call stem rust. I don't know if they're able to see it from there, but uh, all this you see, or what you may refer to as maybe spots, I may want to call them pastils, shows that this particular line of wheat or variety of wheat is susceptible to stem rust. So gene editing is one of the latest technology in in, in plant breeding, would I say, or in science generally, uh, that is, you know, the breeders use to develop, you know, resistant varieties by just doing some machinations, some, 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 some things on the DNA, so to speak. And those machinations, like I just explained earlier, are what I think we call, in, uh, you know, targeted mutations uh, on the DNA, so that by doing that, then they're able to you know, get what you call resistant materials away from what I'm showing right here. It entails actually uh, screening uh, wheat material that has gen been generated. They have been, you know, mutated uh, for resistance to rust diseases. So these particular materials were, were mutated or were generated in the UK. They have been introduced right here in our centre at Karo, in Joro, for so that we screen them against the disease and we pick or we select types that will be resistant. That, will be, that is our desire. You see, it looks short. Looks like it has some good yield. Some farmers may like this. Then it's a bit early. It's a bit early. Yeah. So it's combining some of these traits very well. But then you have all the chance to pick many good material from here. We are collaborating with a number of partners. Uh, some of those are from what you call the CG centers, the Consultative Group of International Agriculture Research uh, Centers. Uh, the, lead, the lead institution is ICALDA. The other institution is CIMIT. But then we also have uh, a number of uh, institutions from Europe, uh, the John Innes Centre in the UK, and the Norwich uh, Institute of Sustainable, uh, if I got it right, Development, and a number of uh, national agriculture research uh, institutions, uh, in, uh, one in Pakistan, then the other in, G in Egypt, and of course, Cairo. Since that SL2 may be combined with a few other genes to to confer some resistance here, the yes. same yes. This year you might pick quite a bit, quite a bit of good lines. We have good lines. And the pressure is very high for the sea, so we are, we, are, we are doing a good job with our partners here, right? right. Where we are standing here, is, uh, I'm able to show you two lines that are just about to be released. These are the latest, the ones that farmers are now expecting. Uh, they are really good looking, they show uh, you know, high yield potential, you can see the spikes, the heads are really good, the height is nice. Uh, you may not see the disease at all, these are resistant. You can't see the past you saw in all the susceptible type. Uh, so this and this other one, uh, we are about to release them, maybe in another six months, the farmers should have those because you are producing seeds. 
Uh, I want to mention that these were produced or bred generally using the conventional methods, where then we are able to accumulate genes, the desired genes for yield, but, but most importantly, the desired genes for ras resistance, what you call adult plant resistance. Uh, Dr. Masharia, uh, we are in another part of your farm here at Caldro, another part of the demonstration farm. Uh, what can we see here? Oh, what you can see right there, I have to walk in there, is a very susceptible line, susceptible to stem rust. You, what you are able to see is that uh, if you focus your camera, though we have the head or the ear of the wheat here, uh, really, there are no good, good grains here, they are all shriveled. Even if you got any grain here, then are you able to get some? They are really, really bad. Look at this. This is really, really shriveled. Yeah. This is not good material. So it tells you that this variety, all this line is very, very susceptible to stem rust. And this is a type we don't want our farmers to grow. I'm Ben Chirchi, working here as a technician. And uh, as you can see, we have a lot of material here from susceptible, resistant, and, uh, and moderate resistant. As Doc said, that uh, here we are cleaning a thousand lines from various countries. And this season we have a lot of stem rust and yellow rust. Uh, this is a very important project for us. It really is a case study. For the very first time, we are having to screen gene-edited material uh, on wheat in this country. So in the past, we have used many other approaches, you know, the conventional breeding approaches to develop and release varieties that are resistant to disease uh, or that are desirable for many traits. But now with this gene-edited, we are thinking we, we, in due course, we, if, if not releasing a variety, we shall be able to get material that we can put in our breeding pipeline uh, uh, and try to develop farmer-preferred, farmer durably resistant wheat varieties.